Hey guys, so um, I figured in 2019 I was going to kind of change up the direction of my channel and kind of dive into a lot of things that um, I kind of feel are, uh, you know, something I find kind of cool and important in the realm of, you know, modern music and playing drums, um, is converting um, acoustic drums to um, electric drums. And, you know, all, I know there's a lot of naysayers. Um, built on the whole concept that, you know, electric drums are not real drummers. You hear that all the time, all the time. Electric drums are not real drums. And, you know, and I understand their points, and I'm not going to invalidate any of their points, or, you know, but I'm going to also kind of show you how, um, that, that I feel that they definitely have earned their place, and that they've come a long way. And, um, you know, that there's definitely things you can do with electric drums that, um, you know, a lot of people are very kind of weary of, especially ones for people who gig. They make their common complaints, but I'm too worried about things going wrong already and all this other stuff. And I kind of wanted to dive into um, kind of why a lot of that is, is almost hearsay, it's false. Um, you know, and it's definitely, you know, it's definitely very, you know, warranted to switch to the electric realm. Um, or even if you're going to go hybrid where you're going to use some electric elements. And kind of, I, I kind of want to, you know, kind of clear the space between the e-drummers and the acoustic drummers and where they kind of, you know, clash, where they, you know, one doesn't really look at the other with the same respect. And I, and I feel that, um, you know, that there's, that, that it's definitely, electric drumming has become, you know, good enough to the point where it's a good contender and uh, is definitely useful for, you know, your average everyday guy who's um, out there gigging small places. And, you know, basically that, they definitely have earned their keep as far as, you know, being real drums as far as I'm concerned. Um, so pretty much what I wanted to start talking about is basically my setup and, you know, my, my, my journey into electric drumming. Um, you know, I, I went to music school and I got evicted from God knows how many apartments for playing drums um, and noise complaints. So I wasn't going to stop being a drummer because it's, as a drummer, you know, you're, you're a drummer and you're a drummer. And, you know, that's just nothing that really stopped you from being a drummer. Uh, so I initially, back in probably about 2003, I bought myself a Roland um, TD12KV, I believe it was. I don't know, one of them. Uh, the ones that come with the, you know, there's three 8-inch toms. Um, I think it's a 10-inch kick drum pad. And then this right here is a PD-105 for your snare. Um, this, out of all of those drums, this is the only one that actually came with like a somewhat of a shell, like you can see here, like the white shell. Um, they all did have the mesh tunable heads, um, and you know, and that was what enabled me to not play through headphones and not get kicked out of apartments. And in the process, you know, I um, really kind of learned the ins and outs of my head of my module and found that I can get some pretty solid sounding stuff. And um, I, at that point, I wasn't gigging with it because that was kind of you know. Here, sir, that was kind of, you know, nobody wanted to gig with electric drums back then. But um, the more and more I did it, and the more I started playing with other bands, the more I almost wished when I was sitting on my acoustic kit that, like, I had the elements that I had at my tip of my fingers for my Roland TV, you know, my electric kit, that I could add like, a cowbell, a Guiga, a, a, a whatever it might be, cowbells, toms, blah, 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 you know, and add all this stuff, and then with a the flip of a switch, be able to, like, have a totally different setup. And basically dumb down, you know, this ridiculous Neil Perk sized kit to something much more manageable to gig with, while still being able to, you know, not only continue to add different sounds as our repertoire of our songs grew, but you know, maintain the old ones without having to lug, you know, blocks over here, rototoms over here, ten million symbols all over the place, and you know. And then when you deal with the whole fact of biking, all that stuff, carrying all your stuff, gigging with that, you know, it's, it became as a drummer, you know, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So um, by switching to electric, um, my, my biggest thing was, was that now I was playing this TD-12, it looked like a toy. I almost felt like I was going, if I was to gig with it, I almost felt like I'm having people watch me play rock band. And, it's, and although people are, you know, it doesn't matter how it looks, it also matters how it sounds, that's, that's not really true. Um, you know, you, you kind of want to have the night, it, it, it all, bands are built on looks, especially these days, you know, like look at some of these artists now who aren't, you wouldn't even call them artists, but because they look good, they make it. 
So, you know, and that also br brings to your stage presence. Um, when you see a guy with like an awesome kit like Danny Carey, you know, Pert, you know, you look at that kit, it's impressive. It's cool to see that when you walk into a, you know, walk into see a concert and like, you see this awesome professional setup, you know, where if he had just like your regular little Roland setup where it looked like a, it looks like a toy. And, you know, and not only does that affect your playing, it, because of how you feel, you know, it also, you know, you're, it, it's just, it just plays a bit, I feel to me, it plays, it does play a role. And anyone who says no, you know, and is only worried about sonically, you know, I understand their argument. Yeah, sonically is the most important, but, you know, it, it also looks to do bad. So I wanted to basically have the versatility of an electric drum set that played and felt like an acoustic drum set and looked good, you know, like it didn't look like a toy. So that's where um, this came into play. I had this DW, it's, this has been my pride and joy for many, many years. Um, you know, I have a very nice set of cymbals as well, acoustic cymbals. Um, but, you know, now I ended up having a, a daughter who I couldn't play it, play my acoustic drums anymore, and I found myself back on my electric a lot. So after she goes to sleep, you know, I could play in headphones. And now, what I ended up doing was switching this to being um, electric. This is fully electric. Um, and still have, when I go to gig with certain bands or different acts, because um, I play with several different bands, some that do hard rock, some that do jazz, and you know, and I have the ability to not have to have a million kits in order to accomplish these different tones and sounds and whatnot. And, um, and, I, and I feel that it's definitely earned its place. So, I mean, just to show you what this kit does in, in a brief kind of overview, and then I'm gonna plan to do another video, um, maybe never, another several videos, on you know not only the converting process and you know the programming process and you know really get into the nitty gritty of going from acoustic to electric. So just to kind of show you, let me grab my headphones here. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the differences in everything here, what I got going. So with no further ado, we'll start with my snare. Is in the center there is a there's a bar that connects between the lugs. And it's basically all you did was unscrew it. There's an L bracket with a bar. And in the middle of the bar, um, there's where the piezo is mounted, right? Um, so piezo, and it's just like a Roland. The piezo would be right in the center here. Um, it's position sensing uh, piezo. And then I have four sensors that sense the rim that are kind of too, like a sticky taped on to the edges, you know, spread evenly. Um, and that way, and that goes for one, two, three, four, you know, all these drums here that were converted. And by position sensing means it can sense whether you're near the edge or, you know, or towards the center. So it knows, and by the having a separate zone for rims, I can program these to be a or same with Tom, the edge. Now I can make my rim cowbell, same goes. Another cowbell, same here. Okay, um, and basically with, that's the same setup and everything. As far as my input jacks are concerned, I basically just went right through the original vent holes, no drilling, no nothing, and I put my quarter inch jacks that connect back to my module um, directly from, you know, they just basically tighten right in like a guitar cable, like a guitar jack would, I mean, they go right into the drum and that's it. And as far as the cymbals are concerned, these cymbals I just basically stole off of my old TV 12 KV, same with the module and all the cables. Um, I also down here have a DW7000 hooked up to, I believe it's a KD7 or KD8, it's an old Roland kick, you know, um, just kick trigger, and uh, right now I have that to set up as a flash because I actually haven't even really programmed it. Um, but again, you can make these anything you want, and the nice thing with that is, you know, there's even further versatility where, like, for instance, I could show you, um, like, you can make when your snare, I'm sorry, when your hi hat is closed, it's that sound as you open it. It's a different sound, so you can even go farther and farther and farther, and like you get so much, and you can do that not only with these sounds, but any sound that's actually in there. See, 
you. So, I mean, it gives you a lot of versatility. I mean, and whether you want to have each drum be two different sounds, or now I can have each drum be four different sounds that, like, that could be closed, closed. That could change if I wanted it to, like this would. And that you can program, you, know, you have, now I have 50 drum sets in here that I could program that to. Um, same with the cymbals, um, like let me switch back here to my normal kit. Um, you know, you have your, on your ride, you get your belt, you get your bow, and then your edge. So you can actually get like real ride action. You know, and it, that in itself, and it's show cool, um, that in itself, you know, you can kind of program your bell to be more cutting. You can have your edge, you know, you could steal like a bell from one cymbal sound head to your edge from a different cymbal sound and your, you know, your bow from a different and like build your own kind of personalized style ride that is, you know, if you really take the time in doing compression, EQ, room sounds, and all, all the little different knickknacks and things you can do inside of the units, depending on your unit, um, you know, you could really kind of accomplish lots of cool stuff. Um, so like, for instance, with this here, I can, you know, basically, You know, so I mean, you can get your real sounding drums that are pretty legit sounding. Or, you know, I could go something even really wild and like, you know, take something that's say, more on the lines of just totally out there and we'll go with, here, let's play with some tabla sitar type stuff. switch down to, you know, just something more rocky, like, um, all right guys, so I guess, you know, to basically conclude, I just wanted to kind of show how, uh, you know, electric drums can really kind of hold their place and where they, you know, have their own as far as, um, you know, what can be done and, you know, why they're actually pretty, 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 uh, good, good things to have, especially in a live setting and even in, you know, recording settings, practicing, it's just all around, they're great, you know, to have. So uh, I just wanted to say, you know, we're gonna do, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch more videos as far as like concerning what electric drums can do, everything on down from different heads, different, you know, different triggering systems, how to set up your triggers, you know, and, and just really dive into the nitty gritty of electric drums and, um, you know, how they can be incorporated, even hybrid. So um, if you like what you're seeing, you know, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, you know, I'll be putting out a whole lot more videos. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, tune in for my next video, which will probably start covering more into the uh, depths of you know my kit, especially and where I plan to go in the future. Thanks a lot, guys.